police shoot dead man in bank siege. Thereby wasting expensive bullets. Good evening, we're back. Though the interdependence of wallopers and journos never went away. Senior Sergeant O'Brien said anyone not misbehaving would be evicted. Well, it was Darwin. While in Launceston, a defendant was convicted of... Possessing a forearm without a licence. They spell it as they say it. In Sydney, the Telegraph exposed a... Secret police cover-up. Is there any other kind? And more police misconduct, according to the Sunraysia Daily. Police attended an armed robbery in Mildura in mid-January. Quis custodiet ipsos custodes? And now on to matters of substance, and first, to catch up on what they've been doing while our backs were turned. Conrad Black has surrendered his interest in the Illawarra Mercury and those other papers he acquired with it, The Age, Financial Review and Sydney Morning Herald, and Canada's loss has been New Zealand's gain. Wollongong can expect a visit from Ron Briley any day now. And his other acquisition, the Fairfax Sun Herald, has stripped the incompetent Alex Mitchell of his column since his union put him to the sword over the Glennon complaint. The committee finds that the articles were harmfully inaccurate. For the moment, the blank page is being filled by Les Carlion, but I can't see that lasting long. And the paper's editor, Andrew Clark, has also been sacrificed, replaced, somewhat gallingly it seems to me, by Alan Revel, late of the Courier-Mail. It was the last mentioned paper, you won't have forgotten, that beat up the vaudeville scoop about Clark's father, Manning. Speaking of the Courier-Mail, it soiled itself again, this time by hiring and almost immediately firing that rolled gold phony Helen Darville, Murdoch's Brisbane tabloid being trusting to a fault, because, editor Chris Mitchell explained, Darville had committed one of the most blatant examples of plagiarism I have ever seen. We thought that interesting, so we've asked Chris Mitchell... What is your definition of plagiarism? ...and a couple of related questions, but as yet no answer. We are, however, infinitely patient. And last in this review of news about print, we return to the Illawarra Mercury and its editor, Peter Cullen. Cullen's enlightened remedy for street violence is, you'll never guess, police violence. Send in the undercover cops and bash the bastards. He yearns for... The local police sergeant and his size 15 boot causing a reign of terror in communities. Where would this program be without him? There's been a bit going on in television too. Seven Star Witness, having credibility problems, had its day in court with the millionaires uncharacteristically reticent. You happy with the way things are going? And her antagonist, Peter Manning, given space in the Oz for some outrageous brown nosing of ABC bosses. Brian Johns was praised for his softly, softly, pragmatic approach. One of his deputies was called his superb lieutenant. And another boss smarmed up to for his logic, charm, and inspiration. What is it, Peter? You want your old job back, do you? Well, not so long as you write like this, a mixed metaphor that should be taken out and shot. It is when Mansfield steps out in uncharted waters, after the quickest of learning curves, that he fumbles the ball. Leave your number at reception, Mr Manning. Anyway, the millionaires is to be replaced by Paul Barry, Telstra's favourite reporter. Yes, my name is Paul Barry. And Manning himself moving aside for Anthony McClellan best known of late for his work in that searing study of conflict, sex, violence and probing interviews, Gladiators. I just want, can I just check that head's still on there? Yes. He's going to rip it off. That was the best necklace I've ever worn in my life. <laughs> Indeed, the Seven Networks had lots of recasting. Today, tonight, presenters Jill Singer and Carolyn Tucker have been turned over for Naomi Robson and Lexi Hamilton-Smith while Helen Wellings, who Seven hoped would give the troubled program consumer cred, has handed over to Peter Luck, and not just for the holidays. But here's one from Wellings' last days in the musical chair, her intro to a classic of tabloid intrepidity with, some might think, a slightly judgmental element. 
Tonight, we exposed Christopher Scase as a liar, a cheat and a thug. The exposers were reporter David Richardson and producer Chris Adams. It was the same old stuff. Shots of the mansion, the fugitive out with friends, the fugitive out for a walk. The difference was that Scase has the Mallorca police in his pocket and used them to harass the Today Tonight team. Guys, Lawrence alleges you stole $20 million, you used your family. For most of our confrontation with Scase, he was smiling. We soon found out why. Roadblocks. Roadblocks. Within minutes, Scase had police roadblocks in place. Every car coming from his village to the capital was searched. Vanderplatt and producer Chris Adams found an equally hot reception at the airport. As soon as I saw that roadblock, I knew, well, this is fitting, and these guys are not messing around. And at the airport, checking passports in a domestic terminal, I mean, it's unheard of. Vanderplatt and Adams successfully escaped the dragnet, but for the other three members of the crew, it meant almost 40 hours on the run. It's a bit after 6.30 in the morning, and this is a small beach outside of Palma, the capital of Majorca. Within minutes of confronting Christopher Scase, there were roadblocks, hotels were searched looking for us. Scase wants to get hold of our tapes that show that he is fit and well. The incredible thing is just how much clout this guy has got on this island. We finally managed to escape Majorca by taking a midnight ferry. Strong stuff. Scase organised police roadblocks. He was after their tape of him. Passport checks, dragnets, hotels searched, crew on the run for 40 hours, escape by midnight ferry. We don't believe a word of it. Why not? Well, take the major allegation that Majorca police threw up roadblocks to search every car for the seven tape. Here's reporter Richardson feeling the heat of the police dragnet. Out of where? The roadblock scenes were all shot in Barcelona, 200 kilometres from the island of Mallorca. The background shows this activity to be in the theatre district of Barcelona. You can see theatre names on the buildings. The number plates on the cars are Barcelona plates, and these aren't police roadblocks, but urban guards arranging traffic flow. And what was this? <laughs> Just a bit of pretending. In case you missed the names, those responsible for the item were journalist David Richardson and producer Chris Adams. A liar, a cheat and a thug. She was talking about Mr Scase, of course. So much of what matters to the commercial networks is commerce and not journalism. And there could be no better example of that than the cap on Tony Bullimore's head, a news shot that echoed around the world, greatly to the chagrin of the underbidder, Nine, whose peak was showing. From near death to a near fortune, this afternoon the first deal was signed for a TV interview, the price we understand cooler than those Antarctic seas, $160,000, and remember that's just the start. Much the same from John Townsend in the West Australian. Channel 7 employed private security guards to stop journalists talking to rescued sailor Tony Bullimore and his wife Lalel. And Townsend found someone to say... It was a clear breach of the journalist's code of ethics and an immoral act. Oh, please, it hurts when I laugh. Seven were at it again with the Stokes checkbook to get an exclusive for Today Tonight on the Rockhampton Quinn's first day at school. By the time they get to school, there is no time to miss mum anyway. It's into class, find a desk and a name tag. A story of mild human interest, but passionately defended, as Nine, deeply offended by an ill-mannered rebuff, was at pains to report. An unpleasant incident has marred the first day at big school for the whale quintuplets in Rockhampton, a Channel 7 cameraman spitting at other local TV crews covering the event. Police were later called in to view the footage. An official complaint has been lodged. 
and they replayed the expectoration three times. Nine spat back with an exclusive of its own. Our Olympic athletes in the heart of Australia's Rachel Hotspot. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, rich, poor, you can do what you dream of. An exclusive report, Cathy Freeman and Kyle van der Kuyp visit Redfern's troubled youth. Unfortunately for Nine, Ten News just happened along and what was intended to be some cynical bathos was turned into a tabloid circus. Oh, mate, it's okay. Cathy's request that no one... Public street. I'm sorry, we can get some shots up. Oh. Cathy, what does it mean to be down here at Everly Street Excuse today? Excuse me, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not a big enough checkbook. Is that the problem? Checkbook? Cathy, what is... Cathy, what's it like to be down here at Redfern today? The Nine Network tried to stop other cameras filming the famous Aboriginal athlete who was trying to bring some positive publicity to an area riddled with crime. The day is long past since an event was to be covered for the information of consumers. Events are now something to be created, then owned, managed and franchised. News values don't rate against merchandising values. It's going to be a hard year. And just in case you thought the media were going to turn over a new leaf for 1997, a bulletin from Radio 4TO Townsville. From the capital of North Queensland, 4TO Local News with John Camplin. It's 8.30, good morning. Police have named a woman who was killed in an accident in air and died later in hospital. And the slavish coverage of that unspeakable woman goes on and on, even on the ABC, where her mindless utterances are treated as newsworthy. Ms Hanson repeated her call to stop immigration, but then went further. Prospective citizens committing serious crimes would be deported and any property held by them would be seized to defray the costs of deportation. The most cursory of research by the ABC journalist Caroline Fisher would have disclosed that the law already provides for the deportation of non-citizens who commit crimes as it does for the confiscation of the proceeds of crime. In other words, there was nothing newsworthy to report, a non-story. At 10 News, Graham Butler can't get past the hype. He'll then be transferred to Fremantle Hospital, where he'll enter the hyperbolic chamber. But at least the Greyhound recorder has its four feet on the ground. No one is above criticism. How very true. Good night to you.